currently leading a workshop on the Oregon coast. And it's one of those days when we did not get the sky that we were hoping for. You're always hoping for the big, beautiful clouds. We didn't get any of that tonight. Decided to come out to the beach just before sunset, watch the sun kind of go over the horizon, and wait around for the stars to come out. So that's what we're, go we're going to attempt to do. We're gonna be photographing some stars tonight. Uh, the tide is coming in, which means that our compositions that we have now are probably not going to work later, but we will see. Also, this is going to be my first time attempting to do astrophotography with the A7S III. So, let's see how it does. So I think tonight we're going to attempt to photograph what Milky Way we do get. Granted, it's not really Milky Way season, but we're gonna get some Milky Way once things get dark enough. So we're gonna try to photograph it over this particular sea stack. When I'm doing astrophotography, I always try to find something that's going to break the horizon, that's gonna go above the horizon. Because oftentimes your foreground is going to be super dark. So it's nice to have something to silhouette against that sky. Plus, over here behind me, we have a whole bunch of amber lights that are just from the, the town that, that's next to the beach. And that's going to, that light pollution is going to serve as, you know, light painting for these sea stacks. So it should be, should be pretty cool. I've had success on this beach before. We'll see how it goes. Sometimes in night photography, I actually prefer those moments when the stars first poke out, but you're getting that ambient glow that's left over from the sunset. That's what we have in this shot. This is about a half hour after sunset when the stars first start to poke out, but we have a little bit of that color coming from the horizon. I dual process this shot inside of Photoshop mostly to try to equal out the white balance difference between the rock formation that had all of that light pollution on it and the sky, which I actually had to brighten in this shot. He goes on one trip with you. <laughs> so we've been experimenting photographing this, this particular rock formation back behind me and the Milky Way is starting to come up above it. Um, the tough part of this time of year is that the Milky Way doesn't have tons of definition in it. It's not, it's not really considered Milky Way season anymore, but it's still cool. There's so much light pollution coming from this city back here. There's these very orange, amber-colored lights that are casting tons and tons of light on this formation to where you don't really have to use crazy high ISOs or anything. It light paints it really nice, but it's gonna take a lot of post-processing to kind of equal out the color temperature difference. You're gonna end up with very blue sky, very orange rock formation, but it's very interesting using this particular camera. The high ISO performance is just nuts. Um, even was experimenting shooting, shooting the stars at F8 because I've never photographed stars at F8. Pretty cool. We're gonna walk around and see what we can find. So I'm really liking this particular composition, mostly because of the reflection that we're getting here. We're getting the Milky Way right above the, the rock formation, getting the nice reflection on this wet sand, but this wet sand is being created by the waves that are coming in and waves going under your tripod. Not very good for sharpness when you're dealing with 30 second exposures. So. As the tide comes in, it changes what we're able to shoot, unfortunately. It's always the challenge with these things. Shooting star. You didn't see it. 
Did it actually happen? It did. One of the benefits to all of that light pollution is that we ended up with this very strong warm to cool color contrast. Again, I dual process this photo, making sure to maintain that warm to cool color temperature difference between the foreground and the sky.